Hey guys, welcome back to Mail Tips Tricks. Today, we're gonna talk about building a slow speed grinder. I know the question you have in your mind right now, what is a slow speed grinder and what is it used for? Well, it's not for grinding things slowly, it's for grinding things very carefully. So this thing is set up to grind and sharpen carbide, but it doesn't just sharpen it, it actually polishes it and gives it a beautiful, beautiful edge. So in this video, what I wanna do is talk about how I put this whole thing together. Now, I gotta say something, guys. This is a scrap metal project. This is just things I had laid around, so there's not gonna be any plants, but it's an easy build, probably with any scraps you have. This one here, I of course went to the next level, painted it, made it look cool. You don't have to go that far. Let me show you how it was all constructed. We're setting up the four jaw chuck right now for the lathe. We got some square stock and we're centering it up and getting it ready to go. We're gonna turn the outside down first and then we're gonna drill a hole in the center and then flip it around. So the hole in the center is actually used for when I flip it around is so I can line it up and get it as close to center as possible. My original idea for this was to drill out the hole and then put the center of the shaft from the bearings right through it and tighten it down. But I ended up, well you'll see here in a minute, where you have that dumb look, you just stand there and you stare and you go, oh, what did I do wrong? Well, I oversized it, but it was the right thing to do. At the end of the day, I realized that I actually needed to have a steel hub in the center of it, so I had a way to clamp it actually to the shaft. We just switched out the three-jaw chuck. We put an adjustable arbor for the center, and we're gonna turn to the outside, and then set up the groove for that small, small V-bell. Here, we're just making it look pretty, putting a little boss on that. Now we're working on the shaft, that actually is going to be pressed into the center of that six inch pulley. Here we go, we're going to drill, a, drill and tap a hole into that arbor so we have a set screw. And this is about a 2,000th press fit. So that means the hole is 2,000th of an inch smaller than the steel arbor itself. Now here we are looking for some scrap metal. Like I said, this is a scrap metal project and every scrap metal project starts out onto the bandsaw. Now we're trying to size this. Now you can see why I end up building the pulley first because I need to make sure I can all fit this in. Well, you'll see here in a minute, I didn't quite have enough steel to make this, so we're gonna weld this up, add some metal to it, grind it down, get it fitted. Now, I wanna cut this radius, and the best way to do it for me was to do it with a plasma cutter and a wood template. Match up the two pieces, clamp them together, grind them, until they're the right fit to each other. Right now we want to mount the motor. I want to put four bolts in there to mount the motor to it. And the best way to do that is just put the bolts in, cut them off, weld them in place, and they're never going to move. This frame is being set up just for the bearings, and you'll see in a moment how it all comes together. So right here, we're going in with some flat steel. We're gonna bend it and weld it into place. 
and this is going to give us a great surface to mount the sheet metal over the top of the box. Now we're bending the sheet metal. This is a challenge, because whatever speed you run this through, well, it can change the shape and not be even. You'll see it when I set up. Sometimes it's even, sometimes it's not. You keep bending it, bending it, reworking it. And after a while, you kind of get a feel for it, and it ends up working out just fine if you've got a hammer around. Now we're fastening the sheet metal right to the original box, and this is when the thing starts to look really cool. And you can see, kind of got to hit it with a hammer every once in a while, kind of work that metal a little bit more. And you can see how right now, I'm actually taking the screws and I'm starting from one side and bringing it over so it actually kind of keeps the whole thing lined up. If I would have started it on both ends, well, the top might have bubbled up or something may not have fitted at the end. So this is the best way, just bring it up and over and make it fit. I made the sheet metal too large and here I'm actually fitting it and grinding it down. Look how fast this cutoff wheel gets chewed up right up through the sheet metal. Clean up the edges with a flap wheel. to do some bead rolling. We're setting up here in the bead roller, marked it out, laid it out, and now we're just going to follow the lines. Now this was my most popular video I've ever done on Instagram. Last I looked there was about 25,000 views of this little short video. Now it's time to work on the table. This is going to be the trunnion. It's a unique design. I don't have my um, milling machine up and working, so everything here had to be done by hand. I'm making a secondary table, welding it on, cutting off the excess like I did before with the sheet metal. Okay, now we're gonna start to the finish now. I'll usually start out with a spray can first and then I'll actually go to a spray gun later. And that's exactly what I did here. Spray cans really get into those cracks really easily, but a real quality finish is actually used with a spray gun. Right here, we're wiring it all up. Now you can't see it, but there's a little rubber grommet inside where the cord goes. And you want to make sure you do that. You want to make sure you secure that cord so it doesn't end up rubbing um, against the sharp corner and wearing out while well, shortening everything. Here we're fitting the belt into place, fitting perfect. Now I, now I can slide the motor left and right just a little bit to tighten up that motor. And it worked out really well, just had exactly the right amount of room.
Now we're assembling the table. Secondary table. So here we go, the slow speed grinder is now completely assembled. Now, there is something that I left out in the video, so I wanna backtrack and go into that. So I never talked about the pulley and the sizing and the speed. So the motor I put in this is a quarter horse motor and it runs at 1,725 RPMs, okay? And we need to get it down to 300 RPMs. Now, it's not that hard. We're gonna end up coming up with a simple ratio number. We don't have to get into using pi or any of that stuff or circumferences or radiuses, it's not that complicated. All we have to do is go, we know what our motor speed is, 1725, take the speed we wanna get it down to, and that's gonna give us our ratio. So we're gonna take 300, divide it into 1725, which comes out to 5.75. An easier number is six. So we need a ratio of one to six. And it's really easy to calculate, is we make a one inch pulley that goes on the motor and a six inch pulley that goes onto the shaft, and that's gonna give us a one to six ratio. It's that simple, guys. We don't have to make it any more crazy than that. And also with that small V-belt, I was able to get it around that smaller radius, and I really suggest getting to a smaller V-belt. And this thing just runs as smooth as butter. The next video I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually show you guys how to use this slow speed grinder one of the things I really like it for is brazon carbide. Works great for that. Also, a nice little surprise is working with carbide inserts like this. Now, you do understand that as soon as you sharpen a carbide insert that you are changing the geometry of it. But since it's dull, it really doesn't matter. You might get a little bit more life out of that. The reason I actually built a slow speed grinder is for this tool here and it's a scraper, and I've got a video coming out very soon on how to scrape and what I've learned in scraping. But to sharpen these, the real key is a slow speed grinder, and that's why I made this. So there you guys go, that's what the next video is gonna be about, is how to use this. I wanna say thank you to all my new subscribers, and also to my old subscribers that have been around for the last four or five years now. Wow, it's hard to believe I've been producing videos that long. And I also wanna say, you can find me on Instagram and Facebook, especially if you wanna know what I've been up to for the last year, because I haven't been able to produce as many videos as I'd like. As you can see, I'm in a new shop. I'm actually here in California now. And there's one video, particularly my last one that talked about moving in here a little bit. I've actually added a lot more machinery since that video because I drove across the country, came back. Well, if you go onto Instagram or Facebook, you can see the whole story and the adventure of I had a total of four flat tires coming across the country. Yes, that's right, four flat tires makes a new world record for me at least, because I haven't had a flat tire in decades, so I definitely made up for it in a two week period. So if you like building something cool, this channel's for you, so don't forget to subscribe. Also click that little bell so you get notifications. And until next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks.